Hey everybody, we're here. It's me. Um, so I wanted to do a video review about DNA. This is going to kind of move quickly through this because um, there's kind of a lot here um, and it's stuff that we talked about in class, but I'm just going to try to summarize it as quickly as I can for you. So we'll talk about the shape of DNA, what it does, replication, transcription, and translation. Unless I decide this video is carrying on too long and then I end up making it into two videos. So let's find out. Um, so this is the things that you need to know about. Yes, you. No, not you. You, yeah. You need to know this about DNA. Okay, well you should know the structure or shape of DNA. Um, you should know its job or function. You should understand why does DNA work the way it does. You should know the nitrogen bases and how they match up, which are found in DNA, which are found in RNA. How does DNA get copied? How does replication occur? What are the types of RNA and what do they do? How does RNA get made? And then how does DNA make this protein? So I'd like to talk to you about all that in this video. We'll, we'll see. If, if I think it's too long, I'll tell you I'm doing it in two parts somewhere in the middle of this video. Or you'll end up seeing two parts. Either way. Um, so what does DNA look like? It's a double helix. It looks like a twisted up ladder, one of those spiral staircases. When it's inside of your cell, it's found inside the nucleus. Sometimes it's found as a chromosome, which is like a nice neat package of DNA. And I've shown this to you in class. Where's my science yarn? It's got to be in here somewhere. This stuff you could have gotten it out before. Yeah, I could have. Um, so a nice neat package of DNA, like a chromosome like this. Actually, it would be like kind of like this shape. This how it looks like an X here. Yeah, you know what? Um, they look like an X like that when they are copied. So before it gets replicated, it looks kind of like just like a kind of like this. Or most of the time your DNA isn't nice and neatly packaged like when you get the Christmas lights when you first buy them. It's like after you take them down and your parents tell you to put them away and you're like, okay, job's done. And it's this big mess inside of a box or something. This big giant mess of DNA, we call that chromatin. So this is what it's like most of the time ah, in your um, in your cells. But when it needs to move and the cell needs to divide for mitosis, it'll organize itself into a chromosome that looks something like this. So that's what DNA looks like. And if we zoomed in really close onto that chromatin, it would look like that. One of those twisted up ladders. Excuse me. Um, there's a lot of it in each one of your cells. There's 23 pairs of those chromosomes. So in every cell, you have 46 chromosomes. That's a lot of DNA. Um, so it has to be organized in some way. And all that DNA um, is made up of nucleotides. And the nucleotide is made up of a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. So the sugar and phosphate are the backbone part, this blue part here. And the base is like the step of the ladder. So this base and this base, this T and this A. Okay, those are nitrogen bases. So we have uh, a nucleotide here, sugar, phosphate, base. And on the opposite side, the blue part here, sugar, phosphate, and a base. That's a nucleotide. Um, though, so the rungs of the ladder, those are the nitrogen bases. And the order that those bases come in um, determines what you look like and who you are. Are you a human? Are you a dandelion? Are you a kitty cat? Like that's, that's what it makes you different from any other living thing on Earth. And even if you are a human like me, which I assume you are, um, it makes you different from every other human on the planet, the order of those bases, and that's it. That's the only reason you you look different than anyone else here on this planet. I, I mean, unless you have an identical twin, in which case you're identical and your DNA is identical. Um, and what makes you look any different from that is the environment, the, the life that you experience makes you different from them. Isn't that neat? Yeah, it really is. So these nitrogen bases only match up in a certain way. A and T match adenine and thymine, and C and G match, um, cytosine and guanine. Um, a lot of times they just write them as the letter, A, T, C, G, um, and they don't write the word, but it's easy to remember because adenine starts with A, so there you go. Um, I used to think, and the way I thought about it when I was in high school, was A and T match because they're pointy letters, and C and G match because they're round letters. So you can think that. I've also heard people say apple in the tree and car in the garage. And that's how you know how they match. And they always match that way. And that's kind of an important idea. Because when DNA gets copied during the S phase of interphase, it needs to be copied in a certain way. 
Um, so that way the DNA in all of our cells ends up being the same. If my cells divide, I don't want there to be some random DNA in there that's making my cell all different. All, all my DNA in my skin cells like that is the same, pretty much. Um, so how does that replication happen? Well, let's kind of talk about it and then we'll look at a picture. The DNA gets unzipped by an enzyme. There are these hydrogen bonds. It's like a bond between like a magnet you can think of. It's like a weak bond. Okay, it's not it's not the same. This is an, an an analogy. So I can pull a magnet. Where is it? There's my fridge here. I can take this nice magnet and I can easily pull it off and put it on. It's like a weak chemical bond. But it would be really hard for me to rip the door off the hinges here. I mean, I could probably do it, but it would take a lot of energy. Um, so the hydrogen bonds that are between those nitrogen bases, they're weak, kind of like a magnet sticking to metal. Like I can pull it off. Um, those weak hydrogen bonds get broken, so whoop, an enzyme comes in and like literally like unzips. Then new nucleotides are matched up with the unzipped halves. Okay, so here's an unzipped part, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then I have another unzipped part, doo -doo -doo, and we end up with two new strands. And each half of each strand comes from the original DNA, so we end up calling it semi-conservative replication. Semi means like partly conservative, saved, replication, copying. Um, so there you go, uh, and there, that's how that works. So let's look at a picture so you can kind of understand better. Here's our DNA molecule. Whoop, this enzyme helicase comes in and unzips the, the DNA. So now we have these nitrogen bases that are just sort of empty. Well, a different enzyme will come in and match these free nucleotides, and this is why the A and T, C and G is important, because it can only match a with T. It can only match C with G. And because of that, we're going to get an exact copy. It's going to be exactly the same as the other side. So now there's like another, another piece to this. This is a little bit extra than what you need to know, at least for my class right now. One side, the enzyme works just fine. It's like, okay, match them up. Da, 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 da. And the other side, it kind of has to work backwards, and it doesn't work really well backwards. One, one student said it's kind of like when you're sewing, and if you know anything about sewing, and you kind of have to do this back stitch, so you kind of have to do one side normally, and then when you flip it over, you kind of have to work backwards, and you have to do a few extra steps. You can think of it like that. Why is it like that? The enzymes really can only work in one direction, and so it's, it kind of has to start and stop and start and stop, whereas this one can just continually go in this direction. This one will go, it'll hit like where it started copying before, and then it's got to pop off and come to this next part and go backwards. It's, I can send you awesome videos that describe this, how these Okazaki fragments are made, and it's called the lagging strand, but you don't need to know that, so don't stress out about it. I just figured since it's right there, I'll tell you about it, but you don't need to know about that right now. So, okay. um, so helicase comes in, we have enzymes that'll work and we'll add those free bases. So let's kind of just look at that. And you'll notice we have our nucleotide, our sugar, phosphate, and base. The enzyme will add, it's called DNA polymerase 3. Don't you love it? Um, it will add those free bases. And you might be like, well, what? it's upside down. Yep. Um, one side, if you could look at it, you'd call it right side up, and the other side is upside down compared to it. And that's just how it works. So we will see that this enzyme we'll add these bases um, and we'll always match them up. So they'll always be an exact copy because it can only match with one other thing. So then we kind of get into this thing called the central dogma. DNA is there. It's the code to make living things. Cool. Um, it can get copied in a process called replication. Okay, we just looked at that. DNA gets unzipped. Free bases are matched up by an enzyme. Thanks, enzymes. Next, we're going to talk about this thing called RNA, and I do think I'm going to make it into a separate video because I feel like this is too much for just one video. It's just, it's just too much to handle. Okay, so RNA, let me, let me try to describe this. I think of DNA as like a giant cookbook. And a gene is a section of DNA that codes for one protein. I think of a gene like a recipe. So RNA 
is like if I went to the DNA cookbook and I copied down a recipe I wanted to make. I don't want to take my whole cookbook to the kitchen because it's kind of heavy and it was from my grandma. And so I don't really want to get like dirt on it because I want it to stay nice forever. So I'll just copy a recipe out and take that to the to the kitchen. Because if that gets dirty, eh, I just copy down a piece of paper. If it gets wrecked up, it's no big deal. So RNA is like if I copied a recipe out of the DNA cookbook. And that process is called transcription. Um, so thinking about the cookbook analogy, I can sit there and I can take my recipe, my RNA, and I can take it over to the kitchen and I can get all the ingredients and then use that recipe and make whatever I'm making. In the case of RNA, I'm going to make a protein. That's called translation. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to do another video and it's going to just be about transcription and translation. Um, so hopefully that will help kind of break this stuff up so it's not so just like a crazy long video. Um, and I hope that helped about DNA and DNA replication.